The next challenge is Rev Supercomputer. Uh, it was built by Ireland, and it says just run the program and it prints the flag. Assuming you have a quantum computer available, we're given a download file. The download file has uh, this chasm file. Um, so if you're not familiar with, oops, wrong one. Uh, if you're not familiar with quantum computing, um, this is one of the ways to specify the operations you want to run, uh, this open chasm format. I think open chasm is at version three now, but uh, we're using version two. Um, and the way to read this is it's, you can kind of think of it like a quantum assembly. I'm get, that's where it gets the name from. Uh, here we're going to define registers. So we're saying we want 400 registers. Uh, and these are different gates. So this CX here is called controlled not. Uh, this Y gate, it's a rotation gate. Um, this is a square root gate. It's a Hadamard gate. Um, so we have these logic operations. You can kind of think of it like the normal logic operations, like ands and ors, uh, but on quantum computers. Um, so we're given this very large file, uh, and there's a couple things to note. First off, 400 qubits on a quantum computer is a lot. Um, so I used to work at a quantum computing company, and our quantum computer had 100 qubits. Um, this was like a year or two ago. Uh, I think IBM does have a 400 quantum uh, com sorry, qubit machine now. Um, so maybe possible on quantum computer if we had one. Uh, but I don't think we can get time on IBM's computer. Not their, uh, not their big one. You can play with their smaller machines though for free, which is pretty cool. Um, and it also the number of gates it's running. Uh, so 169,000. So quantum computers, uh, they measure their gate efficiency in this thing called fidelity. And that's just like the probability of making a mistake. So quantum computers normally like there's different fidelities and there's a bunch of different ways to measure it, but usually it's split into one gate, one qubit fidelity and two qubit gate fidelities. Um, and usually the fidelity is like 99.9 .9 or something like that. So 0.01% of the time or 0.1% of the time, it'll make a mistake and the result will be wrong. Uh, so like we would say one out of a hundred, let's say operations. So by the time it does, you know, gets to here, one of these gates will have messed up. And so our results will be wrong. So again, there's no way to actually run this on a quantum computer. Um, other interesting things. Uh, we can't even simulate this uh, if we were to run a full quantum simulator. So there's a bunch of different ways um, to simulate this stuff if you're interested. Again, there's there's a lot of resources on the internet, but you can use state vectors or you can use density matrices for simulating this stuff. But the memory requirements kind of grow with the scale of qubits. And so the memory requirements for simulating this semi-naively would be 2 to the 400, uh, which is obviously uh, impossible. Uh, we, we don't have that much space. So uh, there's two things. One is either um, there is a way to efficiently simulate this, which there's a famous quantum information theory uh, standard that says that we, we can do that, um, or we can somehow reduce these gates into something more manageable. It's possible like, you know, if you have a knot followed by another knot, obviously it's nothing. And a lot of these, if you scroll down, like the, 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 these kind of patterns are pretty interesting where it does like an S gate and then an H gate on the same gates. So the first thing I tried was to simplify this. Um, and so here's the code. Uh, I'll just go over quickly. Uh, Qiskit is probably the most popular quantum computing library out there, built by IBM. Um, so we're going to load some Qiskit stuff. Uh, the quantum circuit, oops, I loaded it twice. Um, Air is their simulator. Transpiling is how we convert from chasm to something else that Qiskit understands. So like I said, I was going to try and simplify the circuit first. Uh, there's libraries that do this for you. Um, so here's one. So we load the chasm file just from chasm file. Like I said, if you know quantum computing, this was free points. Um, but we load the file, oops, uh, we can specify the optimization level. I did this first, I tried to run it, and I outputted it to this. So this is the simplified quantum computing. Um, this still took maybe a minute to run, um, but it's still super long. Maybe it's a little bit shorter, but it's also introducing, a, these are unitary gates. Um, the gate logic is much more complex, and so it really didn't help. So we can't really simplify the code away. So on to the next thing. Um, like I said, there's a kind of well-known theorem in quantum information theory that says like, if you're only using a subset of gates um, called the Clifford gates, uh, you can efficiently simulate it on a classical computer. So uh, we just have to find a simulator that does that. And the simulators that do it, it's called uh, stabilizers. Um, there, and there's a bunch of simulators that can do it though. Um, so we're gonna use a stabilizer simulator to run this code. And it's not gonna expand like the full like quantum state um, but since we're only using a restriction of possible gates, uh, it'll be fine. Um, and so, yeah, we're just going to run it on this specific um, simulator. Uh, we'll run it. Shots is how many you want times you want to run it. Normally in a quantum circuit, they're very noisy. And so usually you run it like a thousand times or so um, to get better uh, accuracy. And then we're going to print the counts and that'll be it. Oh, I probably should have run this. Come on, Python. Uh, we're going to run it. 
Sweet, and it is done now. Um, so we can see a Python solve. Uh, this is the counts. So it recorded this output. So these are the 400 registers once. So like I said, then we just take this and we We'll take this, we'll send it over to Cyberchef. We can see I already have it loaded from binary, and there's the flag. So, like I said, um, if you know quantum computing, this is free points. Um, you just have to know that you are able to efficiently simulate this. Uh, but yeah, it's fun to see a quantum computing challenge. Thanks.